Hey bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. I was watching the chat on YouTube and Facebook before we got started. I saw Myra Little was watching from Scotland. She, she mentioned that she usually doesn't watch the show live, but she couldn't sleep. So um, thanks for tuning in, Myra, and I hope you can get to sleep after the show. Oh, oh, I see my mom's watching. My mom says happy Valentine's Day. Dicey Blue's watching from Australia, and Charlie's watching from Connecticut. Also browsing through the comments before the show, I saw Jessica mentioned in the comments that she has a three and four year old and she was asking how many bags everyone is making in a week. So um, if you have a response to Jessica's question, go ahead and type that in the comments. I was thinking, I was trying to think when William and Violet were that little, three and four, or maybe a little bit younger, I would get a little bit of sewing in at nap time, maybe 45 minutes, but I would do most of the sewing that I possibly could at night. So what I would do is to put them to sleep this was my strategy. Um, maybe maybe it wasn't the best one, but this is the strategy that we had. So when it was bedtime, I'd get in bed with the two of them. I would lay in the middle and I would tuck my cell phone in my pocket with uh, an alarm and I set it to vibration. So I set the alarm for maybe an hour because um, I knew I would be falling asleep as soon as I got in the bed with them. And I pretty much almost always fell asleep. So I'd set that alarm so I could wake up and do a little bit of sewing I'd stay up till maybe midnight. I'd stay up as late as I possibly could. And then I'd get some sewing done. So maybe I'd finish one or two bags in a week when my kids were that little. Now I can't, I really can't stay up past nine o'clock, 8.30, eight o'clock, 8.30, I'm ready to go upstairs, get in bed, watch TV, maybe work on a little project, right? I go to bed early, right? Hello, yes, Danny. very early. <laughs> and Danny stays up late, so it's like, uh, opposite as far as going to bed. Um, Oops, we have a sorry. bunch of things to talk to you about Ooh. tonight, and then I'll be answering some questions live near the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, you can type it in the comments anytime on either Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch our show. And you'll need to be signed into your either Facebook or YouTube account before you're allowed to type in a comment. And Danny's been having great luck. If you'll either type in a little question mark before you type your question or if you'll type it in capital letters it just helps him separate the questions from the comments because we do have a lot of comments coming through on both Facebook and YouTube thank you for that um, let's see I pulled a bunch of things out on the table so that I could share a few things with you so I promised once in a while I would share the games that we've been playing we've been playing a lot of new games we got a lot of new games for Christmas and this was one that we played a couple of times it's called take five it actually is two card games in one, take five and take a number. We've only played take five. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Skippo in regards to you're putting cards in number order. Um, you're putting cards in rows of five and the thing is um, once there's five cards in a row, if you're the next person to play a card in number order, you have to take all those cards and those are all collected as points. So I really love, I like card games of all kinds. This is a really fun game. William, unfortunately, this is not his favorite, but I think he just got uh, unlucky the few times that we've played, and I think he was uh, lower down in the scores, but um, it is a fun game, and uh, again, it's called Take Five, and uh, it was based uh, originally on a German game, so um, Take Five, it's a lot of fun. I'll update you every few weeks on some new games that we've been playing. Have you enjoyed playing some of the new games that we got for Christmas? Um, I do, but I'm more of a, I like to stick to the old games and continue to play those. Sarah wants to play a new game. Every time we play board games, she wants to introduce mm -hmm. a new one. And I don't enjoy learning new rules and going over stuff. We have a really fun game. It's super basic. It's like you pick a color. Imagine a color grid on the, is the game board and there's maybe 200 color tiles. You pick a card up, it's got one of three choices. You try to describe this color without saying green or blue and then you get one guess. Then the second time around, you'll say um, a two word guess. So maybe like the sky or whatever you wanna choose for like a light blue. And William has done really well with this game, uh, <laughs> but I like it because it's basic, not a lot of thinking and uh, it's quick to play. I like games that I do not wait for other players because sometimes people take longer on their turns, mm -hmm. um, mostly Sarah. And um, <laughs> I like games that are fast turn based. Um, so changing topics a little bit, Anne emailed me a few weeks ago and she mentioned 
Um, this is a really great tip. She said, you know, to remind yourself to stand up every once in a while when you're sewing, maybe you can set either an alarm on your phone if you have a kitchen timer, if you have a watch that you can keep time with and set an alarm on. She said it's really important to maybe stand up every, what would you say, maybe about every every hour or so? Yeah, well, my Apple Watch tells me to stand up every hour. And it, it just helps you with your posture, not getting kind of stuck in that, that position we're all stuck in when we're our sewing machines. And I guess I haven't thought of that in a while because when we moved into this house, we set up my sewing machine at standing height. So I'm, I'm no longer sitting when sewing, I'm standing, but definitely whether you're at the computer or the sewing machine, getting up and standing at least once an hour is a really great tip. So thank you for that, Anne. Um, we've been sharing your featured handmade bag making shops on our show every once in a while. And we wanted to share another shop tonight. There is a, well, first of all, the shop is called Talford Jones. The link to the shop is in the description. And I just love the pouches. Um, this is for crochet hooks, a crochet hook organizer. I love the fabrics that were used for these projects. Uh, the photography is beautiful. Here's another project, um, an eyeglass case, uh, a zippered eyeglass case. And um, there's one more that I pulled a picture of, and this one was for key fobs. So key fobs made with some really pretty ribbons. So again, if you're interested in checking out this shop, it's Talford Jones. The link is in the description. And if you'd like to submit a link to your own bag making shop, it can be a link to Etsy. If you sell mainly from your Facebook page, if you have a website, whatever your link is, the link to our, um, I guess, survey for collecting that information is in the description in case you're interested in that. Barbara said, Danny, we had to set a timer for my husband to take a turn at Scrabble because he would take so many minutes for one turn. That's hilarious. I hope yeah, we don't have to set it, start doing a timer for me. No, you don't take long. <laughs> I was only kidding about that. Um, what else was I going to talk about? Oh, cross stitch. So I finished the cross stitch that I shared with you, I think a couple weeks ago. I started the Sandhill Crane. And I finished it, so I wanted to share it with you. I've been using cross stitch as sort of a, I don't know if security blanket is the right word, but um, I think of it as sort of a prompt for keeping busy. So keeping busy keeps my mind uh, where it should be inst instead of uh, thinking, you know, being sad or thinking about all the things that, uh, I don't know, we're in the house, we can't be doing a lot of things. and. Cross stitch has really helped me because I, I think of it as sort of like having a little angel and devil on my shoulder, but just the angel part. So I have this little Sarah angel on my shoulder, um, checking in with me periodically throughout the day. And if I'm sort of like, meh, the little Sarah angel encourages me, oh, what about that little cross stitch? Or what about that little sewing project? Maybe just pull that out, maybe 10, 15 minutes just give it, you know, 15 minutes and you don't have to work on it longer than that. Just just keep your hands busy for a little bit and see how you feel about it. So generally, once I get started, I want to work on it for much longer than 15 minutes. But it, it's really helped me. Uh, we did a chat on our show um, a couple years ago with a psychologist who encouraged using sewing to keep yourself busy, to keep yourself active and your, your mind off of all of these other things that you might be thinking of. So that's what I've been using cross stitch for lately. So I started it as soon as I finished that one, I started another one. This one's, I've been working on sort of like um, non-realistic animals as you, obviously these are colors that would not appear in a, a regular sandhill crane. But I started sort of a, a realistic cross stitch the other day and it's this horse. So started working on it and I found that a realistic animal is kind of boring. As you can see, it's all browns. I know I'll be super pleased with it when I finish, but um, these, they're called Mandela cross stitches. These are more entertaining for me because of all the bright colors. There's different designs, like there's a little uh, sunrise, there's a little flower in his wing, there's some stripes going on, lots of different color changes. So after that realistic course, I'm gonna be switching back to these uh, bright colorful cross stitches and I noticed so I bought this on Etsy and it was uh, from a magazine from the 80s and I noticed that I don't want to show the whole design on the show but like the squares are so small like my vision's not bad I could see the little squares but I had to enlarge it on my computer um, I think 200% larger just because I was like I don't want to be sitting in bed working on this and having to 
try to count the little squares. So I enlarge it to make it much bigger and I'm, I'm very pleased at having it uh, magnified. I, at first I was gonna struggle through, but I thought, you know, Sarah, you're gonna be working on this project for a couple weeks. Just make it bigger and it's fine. It's totally fine. Um, let's see, a couple months ago, I, I asked for stories to be sent in. If you had uh, a story about how sewing helped your dreams come true. Um, Anne says, I made that horse almost 20 years ago. That's amazing. I, yeah, this was a really, I read the, there was a story about this cross stitch about the lady who designed it. So I read it. It was part of the magazine clipping that I got. So I, I thought it was really interesting and I tried to look up the company online and I couldn't find the website, so. I like the holder, how it's like a horseshoe. Oh yeah, yeah, the holder was really cool too. Um, anyway, so I wanted to share, start sharing some of those stories. We won't be able to share all of them, but these are stories about how sewing helped your dreams come true. So this first story that I'm sharing is from Shweta and this is the story that she sent me. So she said, um, I read your beautiful post on our group where you wanted to know how sewing helped us achieve dreams. I couldn't wait to, to share my life story with you. I separated from my husband in June 2018 and shifted to another city with my son Arnel. I knew nothing except sewing, only bags. Even before my separation, I used to sew a lot. Day, night, I have sewed so many bags, I have lost count. I did not have any other full-time job and I do have a graduation degree but no experience of the job. Sewing was my bread and butter. I worked hard to this day where I am very proud to say that I am completely independent and with this bag making business I am able to make a decent money each month that not only supports my family but also helps my dreams come true of being an entrepreneur. Even during the pandemic once the lockdown was lifted I was blessed with mask orders. God has always answered my prayers. I'm proud to say that I'm a single mother and the only superpower I possess is of sewing. If a woman is determined, she can achieve anything and everything. I hope my story will inspire a few souls and help them achieve their dreams. And I really loved the part about what she said, um, the only superpower I possess is of sewing. So I thought it was a really inspirational story. I wanted to share it on the show. Thank you, Shweta, for um, sending me the story. and. We'll be sharing more stories periodically on the show because I think it's really important to hear how how sewing has inspired others and um, not only to take care of their family, but um, in other ways as well. So um, yeah, thank you again, Shweta. Uh, Danny's second favorite part of the show, when he's on the show, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the Sew Sweetness Squad. We really appreciate you watching the show, whether you watch live or the recording later on during your week. And uh, we also appreciate the likes and shares and the comments, of course, and the questions. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I was looking at some of our older shows and I was looking, Facebook in particular, because you don't really share on YouTube, at least that I know of, that there's a, a tracking mm -hmm. stat. But on Facebook, we're still getting around 100 shares a show, which is awesome and we really appreciate it. And thank you really so much because, um, yeah, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed. I do go look and, and see our stats and compare how they're doing and stuff. And thank you everyone for all the help because it really does help. Uh, so I guess slightly funny story. I, on Friday, I was working on my cross stitch in bed, watching a movie and halfway through the movie, I could tell I was uh, not using great posture because all of a sudden I felt like a zing down the back of my neck and shoulders. And uh, it was sort of like a stiff neck, but you know, a fairly bad stiff neck feeling. And at first I was trying to figure out like, all right, how am I gonna get out of bed? Because I couldn't really turn my head and I felt sort of pain in my back when I tried to sit up. So I spent 30 minutes trying to figure out, all right, should I do like a barrel roll to get out of the bed? Should I call Danny downstairs? What should I do? I finally sort of scooted out of the bed. Danny tried to, I think you were trying to do something with my back, crack it. I, he tried to, Danny likes to watch chiropractors sometimes on YouTube and he sort of tries out different things on me and the kids. Like we hold our, our hands behind our heads and he kind of lifts us up to crack our back and things like that. And nothing was working because I didn't have a necessarily a back that needed to be cracked. It was just a stiff neck. So um, I just laid down, took some ibuprofen. It felt a little better that night. Today is a little better. I still have, I still feel a little pain in my shoulder, but like stiff necks are the worst. I was in a bad mood. I was like, I don't feel like working on anything. Danny's like, you better not work on your cross stitch. You might, you know, no, just I take didn't. it easy. And I was like, after a couple of hours, I was so bored. I went upstairs. I was like, well, maybe I could just work on it a little bit, but make sure you're laying in a good position. So I don't know what happened. Hopefully it doesn't happen 
anytime soon. But yeah, stiff necks are super annoying. Um, on that note, let's uh, get to your pick of the week. Uh, sure, my pick of the week is Maria Jimenez. Um, she made this bag as a diaper bag for her new grandchild. Uh, he's part of the Jimenez pack. Uh, I thought I loved the embroidery on there. Uh, great super bloom tote. Uh, I, I loved it. I loved everything about it. Great picture, cool embroidery. Two thumbs up, Maria. Yeah, and great idea for a diaper bag. I, I like how it's personalized, and I think it's a really great size. I'm trying to think back on bags when my kids were little that I used for diaper bags, and it was about the size of the Super Bloom. So um, again, great job, Maria, and gorgeous photograph, and congratulations. All right, um, I'm going to be getting over to some questions in just a minute. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and the winner of last week's giveaway was Kelly Kane. Congratulations to you, Kelly. Um, we'll have another giveaway at the end of the show. So, uh, Danny, I know you've been collecting some questions. Wanda says, can you tell us the name of the fabric behind Danny's right shoulder? It is a teal color with animals. Um, right I think there. it's the one with the deer. You want to grab, can you reach it from here? No, I can't. Okay, I'll grab it. Oh, yes, you can. There you go. This is, um, I'm sure I'm pronouncing the designer's name wrong. So first off, this is from Free Spirit Fabrics. The designer is Odile Bayou. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. B-A-I-L-L-O-U-E, I think. Um, I think the fabric line is called Land Art, and it came in this blue colorway as well as sort of a red and pink colorway. I really love the animals on it. There's... Uh, the fox, chipmunk, rabbit, deer, there's an owl on the other side. So yeah, I, I, it's really pretty and I still have a few yards of it in my stash. Kristen says, how often do you change your needles? This is a really great question and something I've been thinking about lately. Lately I've been working on some smaller projects and so normally for a bag I would change my needle after I complete the bag. So it, I would start with a new needle in my machine at the beginning of the project. Since I'm working on shorter projects, I've been letting it go for about two of the shorter projects and then I replace the needle. Um, it's really important to be working with a sharp needle because it prevents things like skip stitches, funky things going on when you try to change stitch lengths and all that. And um, by the way, I, I like using 9014 Microtex needles for sewing, either the Oregon brand or the Schmetz brand are two brands that I've used in the past. Tina says, has your family ever played Risk? Uh, I don't think I've played Risk. Have you played Risk before? Uh, no. Maybe we should. I, I'm not familiar with it at all. Yeah, so. your uncle plays it. Um, we were talking about it before. It's like you get the different parts of the world and you have to battle each other for continent control. Oh, okay. I guess I'll have to look that up. They mentioned it's a very long game, like three to four hours possibly. Oh, okay. Then that's, I, I kind of like one hour or less or even half hour or less. What about you? Do you like shorter games? Um, no, I like long and short games. Okay. I'll still look it up though, because it might be something we might like playing. Jaded says, when playing Uno, do you pick up one card when you cannot play or multiple cards until you can play? So I'm not sure if this is right or not, but when we've played Uno in the past, uh, if we, like if I couldn't put down a card that matched either the color or the number, I would keep picking cards until I had something to put down. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Sometimes it feels almost not fair if you're just collecting wild cards uh, and trying to collect wild cards so you have more in your hand. And I know Williams Williams done that in the past. So uh, again, I don't know if that's the correct rules for that game or not. What do we do? We pick up Uno? an unlimited number, right? Just keep picking up so you can play something? Yes. That's how we play. Uh, Bunny says, are your bags made for beginners? So I feel like, especially with the videos, since most of my patterns have uh, companion videos to go along with them, I feel like um, many bags can be made by confident beginners. Obviously, some involve more skills than others as far as different techniques like uh, zippers. Some just have magnetic snaps, which might be slightly easier. If you're looking for a bag to get started, I highly recommend either the Baker Street bag, it's a free pattern and video, or the Easy Leather Hobo bag, it's also a free pattern and video. Uh, when back stitching, how many stitches should you take for security? Um, do you need to go back and forth? So that's a great question. So just on a regular line of stitching, I usually go just back and forth once or twice. Um, I have a lever on my machine that does the back stitch. 
if I'm, say for instance, sewing in a pocket, sewing dividers in the center of a pocket, just because pockets I'm envisioning being used often, putting things out, taking them out, might have a little bit more stress. I might backstitch um, several more times than just once or twice, just to make sure that that stitching line is reinforced. If it's an area of the bag that might have a lot of stress, uh, such as maybe a backpack where the straps are, you could even um, perform a second line of stitching, kind of like a double stitch, but uh, slightly, maybe a stitch or two away from the first line of stitching just to reinforce that area. Uh, Carrie said, has a, link, has a link been posted to the cross stitch patterns and kits? Um, I, I don't think I posted it tonight, but um, these kits are from Awesome Pattern Studio. They have an Etsy shop as well as a website. And they sell the patterns uh, as PDF versions. They sell kits through the mail with the thread. So there's a lot of options that they have on their website. And again, that's Awesome Pattern Studio. Jill says, what fabrics are you looking forward to in 2021? I'm trying to think of what I had pre-ordered. I usually pre-order Allison Glass's upcoming fabric lines. She usually has a lot of uh, blender type fabrics. Tula Pink's um, Alice in Wonderland themed fabric is coming out this year as well. I think that's in April. I'm trying to think what else. Anna Maria Horner has a new line which features, I can't, I, I can't recall the name of the fabric line off the top of my head, but it features reprints of some of her past florals and some of them are in slightly different colorways. I'm sure there's some I'm forgetting. Yeah, that's that, off the top of my head, that's what I can think of. <laughs> Renee says, any update on the shop for the YouTube channel? That would be once we ha hit 100,000 followers, we'll have that option uh, enabled through um, a vendor and that'll be attached to the channel. Um, let's see. Uh, Kathy says, would you share the black and white fabric bag on the shelf behind Sarah with no H? This is the Super Bloom Tote, which also was the featured bag from Maria a little bit earlier. This fabric is, I purchased it a few years ago. It's a sateen fabric from Joel Dewberry, and the fabric line is called Birch Farm, I want to say. I, I might be slightly incorrect. So this particular colorway is out of print, but you can still find other colorways on Hawthorne Supply Company. They carry um, Joel Dewberry's designs that they're custom printing in lots of different colorways. Some of them are monochromatic, meaning like purple on purple, and some of them are uh, slight variations. Uh, all are pretty, and you can choose, because they're custom printing their fabrics on, some of their fabrics on Hawthorne Supply Company, you can choose the substrate. So for instance, if you would like uh, a jersey knit, or uh, a sateen, or a quilting cotton, they have those options on their website. Tracy says, do you ever test patterns for other designers? So it has been, quite a few years since I've tested a pattern for another designer. Not that I don't want to, just uh, not time in the day. I think the last pattern I tested was maybe five or six years ago. It was a garment pattern and it was for a knit dress. So um, it's been a while. Um, years ago, I tested a few quilt patterns for Amanda Murphy designs. She has some really great designs. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it. I can I can remember. Uh, I guess that not enough time in the day, but it would be fun to test uh, just to see uh, another person's take on pattern writing. Um, Rita says, "Have you been doing any machine embroidery?" Um, I have not. Uh, we've been working on some things behind the scenes, and I've been working on that cross stitch. So um, yeah, I guess we haven't made time for the machine embroidery lately. Michelle says, I used a different color thread on the bobbin and the top thread to, uh, and the top thread bled through. How do I avoid this in future? So maybe you want to look at adjusting your tension. Sometime if the t sometimes if the tension is a little off, it can pull the bottom thread so that you see it on the top. Um, I have a really great uh, sewing machine uh, troubleshooting book. The author was Bernie Tobish and you can find that on, online or on Amazon and it's a really great reference tool for fixing things like tension. Also you can obviously Google that as well. Elizabeth says made my first bag this week. I love the Sloan. Uh, congratulations Elizabeth. Welcome to the bag making squad. Totally. 
Um, bag making is such a, I don't know, you can finish a bag in a day or two um, and get that instant gratification of having a finished project. It's great for using yourself or giving for gifts. So um, I think that's why bag making stuck with me from the beginning. I tried all different things, garment making, quilt making, but bag making is A plus in my book. Linda says, have you used elastic binding? I did and it's fabulous. Um, I'm not sure if you mean the fold over elastic for binding seams or edges, but if that's the case, I do love a good fold over elastic. It's really great for um, if you're using a lining where you need to bind the edges. It's really forgiving because it's stretchy, nice to work with, uh, yep. Mel says, what weight thread do you use for bags? Uh, I use Orifil 40 weight thread. It's 100% cotton thread. Polyester thread is also fine, such as an all-purpose thread, uh, for instance, from Coates and Clark. Um, in a pinch, I've used 50 weight thread in case I, I have a mixture of 40 weight and 50 weight in my stash and some colors I have in only 50 weight. And so if I'm looking for a particular color and I only have it in the 50 weight, I'll use that, but I prefer the 40 weight for bag making. Jesse says, have you ever used Craft Fuse 808? I find that to be my favorite fusible interfacing. Gives it great stiffness and comes in rolls of four yards for $6 at my local Walmart. So I've used it maybe once or twice in the past. Pollen Craft Fuse number 808. I find it's pretty similar to Pollen Decker Bond, which is 809. The Decker Bond is maybe a little bit, a tiny bit more stiffness. Um, I'm curious what you use it for, if you use it for the exterior of your bag or if you just use it for the lining, but it does have a nice stiffness, a step up from Pellant Shape Flex. Jamie says, your bags are awesome for beginners because questions can always be answered by the Facebook page groupies or you, the amazing inspiration of So Sweetness. Thank you so much, Jamie. I really appreciate that. So if you're not already a member of our Facebook group, those of you that are watching, we do have a closed private Facebook group for So Sweetness members where you can post photos of your finished projects. If you have a question about a particular pattern or general bag making question, you can post those questions in the group and see other people answer. And you can always email me directly. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H and we'll be glad to help you. We have uh, three people on emails, myself, Danny, and Bronwyn, and one of us will answer your emails for sure. And I get a lot of emails that are specifically personally meant for me. And of course I always answer those myself. Um, have you thought about a drawstring bucket bag using grommets? Um, I don't know, I guess I, I have thought of that type of pattern over the years. I've seen a few other designers do that type of bag. So I guess that's why I've shied away from it. But maybe if I could come up with something and put my own spin on it and give it a unique take um, that's when I would for sure come out with some sort of, uh, a bucket bag. Cause I, I do like that style a lot myself. Um, Angie says, gosh, guys, both of you are very inspiring to me. I anticipate this show all week long. You always decompress my long week and get me ready for the new one. Love you guys. Happy Valentine's day. Thank you so that's much, Angie. Nice I really appreciate that. That was really nice of you to say. And, um, I do collect really sweet comments and especially emails. I have a a folder in my email, email email inbox. It's called Happy Mail. And whenever I get a really nice email, I stick it in there for a rainy day. Um, and then I read them. Uh, if I need a little pick me up, I go in my Happy Mail folder and read one of those emails. Blossom says, how do you store your fabric for garment making like knits and rayon? So I do use, I can't reach it from here. It's across the table, but I do use comic book boards for folding my quilting cottons on. I do use comic book boards also for my garment fabrics, although it's a little bit, my little bundle is a little bit thicker for the garment fabrics, like knit fabrics. Um, but I do still attempt to use the comic book boards because I feel like um, folding all my fabric on the boards makes them a little bit uniform. You can also use your quilting ruler and fold your fabric over the ruler and then just slide the ruler out uh, to get sort of a uniform fold. But I just like the nice neat stacks on my bookcase uh, of all the fabrics. Um, Anne says, have you used fold over elastic instead of cotton binding on a bag? Um, I'm sure I have over the years. Lately, I've been using the fold over elastic for mesh elastic pockets, which I have a few patterns lately that I've worked that fold over elastic in for that purpose, such as the sewing machine travel bag. Um, I guess I'll have to think of, I don't think I've done a tutorial for fold over elastic for binding, but I'm going to add it to my list because I think that would be uh, an interesting video tutorial. 
Gina says, how do you decide what patterns you make next? Looking forward to a foldable, zippable garment bag. Oh, that's a really great idea, uh, the garment bag. I try to think of different, so I try to schedule myself for the patterns for the year if I possibly can, such as um, maybe a four pack video bundle, say in for June or November. Um, I try to put a mix of different types of bags in there. For instance, um, I wouldn't put all large bags in the same grouping. I try to make them like for for last February for the for his hers and furs bundle. It was four patterns, so I did a I did a messenger bag, a tool bag. What else did I do? Uh, a pet carrier and a laptop bag. So those were different types of bags like the laptop bag was uh, our briefcase was different style than the the messenger a small messenger bag so I try to think of making a variety so I wouldn't put all small bags or all in my case I'm I'm one to design larger bags I try to give it a good variation or perhaps throw a backpack in there or a pouch the last four pack video bundle had the bellow pouch in there so I try to try to give it a good variety for different people you might be sewing for or different uh, uses for yourself if you're sewing for yourself. Debbie says, how do you pre-order designer fabrics? So some quilt shops that I follow online do pre-orders for fabrics such as uh, stash fabrics. Um, sometimes they do pre-orders for popular lines of fabrics. You can also find pre-orders uh, on Etsy. Um, trying to think of what other pre-orders I've seen online. Uh, fabric candy shop. Um, I've pre-ordered fabric from them before. Um, so there's a few options for pre-ordering. Um, generally I find that uh, a pre-order is not necessary unless you want to pay for the fabric in advance just because usually when fabric lines come out there's plenty to go along. I found plenty to go around or at least I found that to be the case. Melinda says any chance of having the Oslo craft bag added to our accounts? Was out shopping for fabric, but couldn't remember the yardage requirements. So let me see. So the Oslo Craft Bag is uh, an exclusive pattern for only newsletter subscribers. So unfortunately, that's why we can't have that in our pattern shop to be added to accounts because uh, it's automatically sent out when someone subscribes to our newsletter. I'm trying to think. My blog post, uh, it's been some years ago since I did a blog post for the Oslo Craft Bag, but the blog posts may in fact have the supply requirements for that particular pattern. Um, I'm, I'll write myself a note if it doesn't. I'll add it to the blog post. Um, you can always Google our patterns or check my blog. Um, generally when I come out with a new pattern, I prepare a blog post with relevant, relevant information such as supplies. So um, if it's not available in the pattern shop, you can usually find that information on my blog. Sarah says, will you be getting the rainbow black cork back in the shop anytime soon? So we do have that on order. Um, it should be here. I don't think it'll be this here this week. Hopefully it'll be coming in soon. We do have an out of stock notification available on our website. So if anything, if a product is out of stock that you're looking at and you're interested in it, there's a box on that product listing to enter your email address and then you'll be automatically emailed as soon as that item is placed back in stock. And if that particular product has a variation, such as two different sizes or different color options, just pick that variation from the drop-down box and then that email notification box will pop up after you choose uh, your option. Rebecca says, when will you sell some of the stickers that Violet designed? Sarah, wow, you needed a breath there. That was a whole water, yeah. machine gun <laughs> shot of uh, answering the questions. Good job on that. Uh, <laughs> we're making a collection of Violet's designs. Um, I'm using uh, st Sticker Mule to mm -hmm. check out different uh, formats and media to see what works best for us. And we're, I'm not sure what our plans to do with the stickers yet, but we're gonna have a nice little collection. And when we're ready, we'll let everyone know, uh, hey, this is gonna be available. Maybe it'll be around the time we hit 100,000 on YouTube, then you'll have a, a great video of me sewing a pouch as well, uh, nudging you to make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe button on YouTube. <laughs> And uh, when we hit around there, we'll maybe have some, you know, great surprises to be. You're, I think you're still trying to, the stickers we got last time were okay, but I think you're trying to experiment with the different background Yeah, background we're doing colors. all different stuff. Yeah, we got a lot of time. Like I'm saying, it's projected, I think, in May for the 100,000. So uh, we have a little time. That's the estimated arrival. 
Bunny says, have you ever tried the foot on your sewing machine that cuts material instead of a serger? Um, I have not. I actually didn't know there was a foot like that for a sewing machine. I, I'm aware of it on my serger. As you sew, it cuts through the side edge of the fabric, but um, that's interesting. I'd be curious to see what that type of foot is like. Kathy says, which embroidery machine do you have? It is the... Uh, oh, it's shoot. over there, sir. It's over there. <laughs> the brother... Uh, I don't have my glasses on. Six, Saw you. 1600E is what I'm seeing from here. Uh, we chose that machine because we wanted sort of a... Embroidery only machine. Embroidery only machine. We didn't want to... I mean, embroidery machines are expensive to begin with, but we tried to stick to a lower cost machine, I guess. It's all relative. Yeah, it's all relative. Lower to you would be expensive to me. Yeah, that's true. It was sort of... It was a little... It's more expensive than my sewing machine, let's put it that way. <laughs> Prentice says, I've missed the last couple of shows. Had to work. Have you finished your quilt? Um... I finished a... I showed last Sunday a quilt I made for my friend Kelly. Um, what other quilts am I working on? Um, I was working on... I was starting a Christmas quilt. I have collected the fabrics yet, and I have not made the first block, but it's throughout this year, so I have time to catch up. And what else? Um, you, you probably know I'm a fan of the Summer Sampler series. It's their 10-year anniversary this year, so they're going back to the, the original Summer Sampler, which was a free quilt along, so they're going to be doing that this summer, so I think I'll probably participate in that. You can just Google Summer Sampler quilt, and I think that information should come up. Um, Chandra says, what is your favorite fabric right now? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm really digging Allison Glass's... Um, art theory fabric line. So she reprinted some of the original art theory prints as well as introducing some new ones. And you can find those fabrics on her website or at your local quilt shop. Um, Allison's website is allisonglass.com. And again, that's the art theory fabric line. I just really love the rainbow colors, um, a mixture of big prints and small prints. Um, I've been trying to prevent myself from, I made a few sewing projects lately and I I had to stop myself because using every, it every time. Yeah, every pro, every project I was like, yeah. oh, I really want to use this fabric again. I want to use this fabric again. And I'm like, no, they're all going to look the same. You have to use a different fabric. You can't keep using the same fabrics. You know what I like is actually uh, Tula Pink's the holiday, holiday with the homies. Mm -hmm. Is that it? With the Christmas they're, Yeah, theme. but they're doing it in flannel this time. And they did yeah. a little changes to it. Uh, to me, it seemed pretty cool. I like. I would like to see a quilt made out of flannel and how soft it would be. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that would be great, especially uh, a Christmas quilt. Um, bag making is spiritual. Yeah, it's really, it's amazing going into the sewing room and sewing up a project. Like the day just goes by like that. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like you're occupied for a few hours. Uh, it's a great feeling, especially when you finish the project. Uh, it's just fantastic. Donna says, any tips for making the triple threat? I'm making one as a nurse's bag. So the triple threat briefcase is I have one over here on the shelf. I, I think I'm going to rotate my bags out soon, but I still have this one on the shelf. So it's got, the reason it's called the triple thread is it's got the three uh, zippered areas over here. One in the front, one in the back, and one in the middle. What a great present for uh, a nurse's gift. Um, I think I originally designed this as sort of a laptop bag, but you could certainly use these for all different things. I think I saw someone in the Facebook group recently post one for a fundraiser for a dog rescue, and they made... Um, one in like a doggy theme, which I thought was super cute with a dog panel in the middle. Um, so I guess there's a few more uses for this rather than just uh, going to the office. Dawn says, I counted up 150 bags since I started making so sweetness bags. Oh my gosh, that is so many bags. Perhaps more bags than than. Dawn is also a longtime myself. viewer. I yes. remember Dawn. Uh, every week she's showing her showing up to the shows, commenting and Thank you, Don, for that. Uh, I do notice it. In the Facebook group as well. <laughs> yep. Don's been oh, making lots sure. of amazing yep. projects. Uh, wow, congratulations, 150. That is so many. Val says, do you always use a neutral thread for seams, or do you match the thread color to your fabric? If you use neutral, do you change thread color for top stitching? So that's a really great question. So I try to use, um, let's see. I try to match the thread if I possibly can, but if I don't have a thread color to match the thread, um, rather than trying to force a color which doesn't exactly match, you don't want something too light or too dark because it'll really stand out and be kind of like a sore thumb, be really apparent. 
Um, a neutral color is always a great second option, either a white, an ivory color, a light gray. Um, those are all great options, but if I possibly can, I will do my best to match it to the fabric. And if I'm using a different fabric color for the lining, if I'm, for instance, doing top stitching at the end, I'll try to match my top thread to the exterior fabric and the bobbin thread to my lining fabric so that they, they blend in. Kara says, what is a good substitute for Decoville Light and Heavy? So a, good, a really good substitute for Decoville Light is Pellon Decker Bond, which is number 809. I feel like they're pretty close. You can even use two layers of Decker Bond if you prefer. Decoville Heavy is a little bit different because I find that there's no exact substitute. I would use Pellon Peltex instead of the Decoville Heavy, but they're not exactly the same. So the Decoville Heavy is thinner, but it still gives a really good stiffness. Um, I think we have a video on the YouTube channel talking about Decoville Light versus Decoville Heavy, so check that out on the So Sweetness channel. But I do like both of those item, uh, both of those interfacings very much. They're really, really useful, and I have them in my stash as well as those respective Pellon um, items. Sherry says, I just finished the Oriole bag, my first bag, and struggled with the darts. Any suggestions? So I did see a tutorial a couple years ago, not a tutorial, uh, sort of a photographic demonstration of sewing darts in a bag, especially in the Oriole bag, those are bigger darts, um, by top stitching sort of closer to this, closer to where you'll be stitching first, and then sewing a little bit, sewing where you should be sewing. Generally what I do, um, this is just my habit, is I like to run my fingers on the right side of the fabric uh, to kind of smooth it out first. And then I place wonder clips uh, all over that area to kind of keep the fabric flat before I sew through the darts uh, so that I don't get a bunch of fabric bunched up and sew through a pucker. So um, that's my method. Hopefully that makes sense with the, the description. But yeah, I smooth it out on the inside, which is the right side of the fabric first with my finger, smooth it out really good, and then place some wonder clips maybe an inch or two away from the area I'll actually be sewing to keep everything nice and flat uh, for when I go into sew. Sophie says, hi Danny and Sarah, out of curiosity, since I'm pretty new here, have you ever shown your fabric stash? Hey Sophie. Hey Sophie, thanks for uh, joining us. Um, so in, our, in my old studio, my background was my fabric stash. So um, last year, every show, the fabric was behind me. When we moved into our new house, I decided to keep the fabric in the basement. So I don't think I've actually done a formal photograph or video of that area just because it's really a mess, which is good and bad. It's good because the mess is in the basement and not in my sewing area, um, but it's bad because it's always messy. So maybe I'll take a picture and show it next Sunday on the show. Um, I'm probably not gonna clean up before I take the picture just because I feel like I can't be bothered, but uh, at least you'll get to see where the fabric is kept now. Uh, Donna says, a while back, someone made a pincushion for needle size. How do I find it? Um, I'm not sure if you mean, recently in the Facebook group, I did see someone made an embroidered panel for their, I think it was the Creative Maker Supply Case that they made with one of my patterns. And their embroidered panel had the different uh, needle sizes and needle types. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. But if it is, let me know. You can always email me. And I'll try to try my best to find that post for you. But it, it looked really, really interesting. If you're looking for something store-bought, we do have the MyPad. It's called MyPad, which we sell in our shop. And it's a, I think it's a quarter of an inch foam pad with printing on it with all the different needle types. So you just stick your different needle types inside the pad. So either way, feel free to email me after the show and I'm happy to help you with that. Linda says, is there a specific way to cut mesh? Do you cut stretch from side to side? So depends on the, what you're using the mesh for. Generally, I'm using it for a mesh pocket, and especially if it's for a mesh elastic pocket, I want it to stretch because when I put more items inside, I sort of want it to stretch. Uh, is this, is this, would this be lengthwise? That would be horizontal. Oh, uh, is that what that would be considered? With length. I, I don't want to tell you because I'm not sure. I'd be wrong. Um, so when you open up your package of mesh or if you've purchased it by the yard. Um, generally, I'm cutting from, this is probably the wrong way to say it, but from left to right, that's where I want the I'll stretch to be. I'll say horizontal. Horizontal, okay. Um, 
because generally I want the pocket to stretch that way and you can always take a look at the mesh that you have. Usually it only stretches one way. If it stretches this way- That is width. I'm thinking for fish tanks. We had a, a fish tank would be 48 inches wide. Um, with 13 inches length would be the depth back, then 18 inches height. Okay. So width- So generally height, I'm looking length. for the stretch in the mesh to go widthwise. Confirmed. All right, on that note, we have one last comment. It's not a question. Oh, thanks. That's that's my mom and dad watching. That's obviously for my dad because it says Bob. That's his name. To my beautiful daughter, happy Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, that's really nice. Right. Thanks, Bob. You too. My mom and dad always watch, always watch the show. My grandma does also. And she always tells me, um, oh, she, my grandma always says. My mom watches too. Uh, she loves watching my videos. She says, I always explain things so nicely and she makes sure to always tell me that. She was telling me that yesterday, so. Um, it's funny, when I talk to Oma, I, um, she's like, Danny, I usually help with her phone often. And she's like, yeah, I was using my phone and somehow I'm getting these pictures on there. And when I set her phone up, I used Instagram and I gave her access to you know her accounts so she could see what's going on. And she thinks that people are like texting her pictures, but she doesn't realize she's going into like Instagram and like scrolling through the feed or whatnot. Well, we, I was talk, with my grandma, I was talking about Instagram yesterday and she said, well, uh, I see the, I see your pictures, but how do I let you know that I, that I got them? And I said, oh, it, cause it, you know, it's Instagram. I said, all you have to do when you see the picture, double tap it with your finger and then it'll make a little heart. Cause that's what it does on Instagram. And then I'll know that you saw it and that you liked it. So. Now, I, when you say a double tap, I see sometimes YouTube people, they'll say, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button twice because you do dislike it so much. Really, you're not disliking at all. You hit it once, it dislikes. Second time, takes it away. So it's interesting <laughs> how they're trying to like fool people. That's really funny. Yep. Um, all right, so one last thing for today is the giveaway. So as I do have quite a large Chula Pink collection down there in the basement where the fabric stash is, we're going to be giving away um, six yards of tulip pink fabric in some greens, reds, and pinks. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer my giveaway question in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch our show. I'll draw the winner this Saturday at the end of the day and announce the winner on next Sunday's show. And my giveaway question is, what are your other hobbies besides sewing? So just let me know in the comments what your other hobbies are. What are your hobbies? Uh, video gaming. And video gaming? Video gaming. <laughs> Wouldn't that be my hobby? Yeah. Are you saying besides that? Yeah. Uh, I like to research technology. Awesome. Uh, obviously, sewing for me, cross stitch I've been sharing lately, horseback riding, reading books, watching movies. I guess I have quite a few. So thank you so much for joining us for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.